really be effective, you really do need that Shiyu next to you in order to be reducing the special defense of all the Pokemon that you're facing against. But with that Psychic Surge coming out, we're going to have that Psychic Terrain up and active in this first game. We have Jackson versus Brantley, and I'm very excited to see what these trainers are going to be doing for us in this first turn. Yeah, here we are. We have the Chi Yu and the Urshifu being <laughs> set out first for Jackson. On the side of Brantley, we have Calyrex and NDD female here. Psychic Terrain is up. Let's see what they do. There's the Trick Room set up. Yeah. Like he's going to be committed. Now let's see how this one plays out. So this is the gamble that you kind of have to take if you are playing that uh, Calyrex setup. You're able to, you're able to much more reliably get that first turn going in your favor. You have the Ndidi. It's even terrestrializing into more favorable um, typing to tank some of these moves that might be coming out, and it's gonna fall wow. on me. So your Calyrex is basically guaranteed to get the Trick Room off. Um, Heat Wave is gonna come Ooh. out. Actually, I kind of completely forgot the fact wow. that it is running Heat Wave. So it's gonna be very devastating to take. But with that wicked blow, thanks to the terrestrialization, the Ndidi is still gonna be able to withstand that. Ndidi is still up, but with the coverage moves from Chi Yu, it's not that follow me is not gonna be as effective as it needs to be. This Calyrex is on its last legs. It needs to move and it needs to move quick, 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 and it will through this trick room. There's a glacial lance. Let's see how strong this is. Wow, almost takes both of them out in one quick move. Follow up. Dazzling Gleam to follow it up. Chi Yu still up. That Urshu is going to go down. Yeah, so Chi Yu, again, it's, this Pokemon is very uh, embodiment of looks can be deceiving. It's so tanky based off of its status. But, of course, Calyrex, it's going to fall to that heat wave. And that's going to be basically one of your win conditions out of the game. Thankfully, you were able to at least take out the Urshifu. But... Uh, you really do wish you were able to maintain your Calyrex. Unfortunately, it is what it is. You have to make do with what you got oh. coming out. The Torkoal is going to come out. That's going to actually boost the stats for both the Chi Yu and the Torkoal. Yeah. I was going to say, this Chi Yu now is a very dangerous thing to have on the field. If this Chi Yu can get one more over, he, it is going to be absolutely massive. Great place for by Jackson, but. I have a feeling Brantley has some tricks up his sleeve. Yeah, the thing is, this Chiyu is the fastest Pokemon on the field, which means, of course, well, actually, Tornadus is. But in any case, thanks to the Trick Room, it's going to go last. And honestly, it's actually not that tanky. It's just because of the typing. Yes. It was able to resist <laughs> that Dazzling Gleam. This Chiyu is very likely to go down here. I might, we might even see a switch. Actually, no, it is just going to sink through. You're going to let your Chiyu go down here. With the um, sun and the helping hand, the Shi was very likely to fall even there though it was this, and that's going to also take out the Tornadus. Wow. Jackson down to just one Pokemon here, and it's looking to be pretty brutal so far, especially with that Trick Room still up. Yeah, you're not going to be able to do too much against this force <laughs> coming from this Torkoal. And then single move with one uh, Torkoal blast there from the eruption. <laughs> Brantley has completely flipped the setup of this game. Now this Therapagos has to try and sweep three Pokemon. And of course, we're going to see the Terra come out from Therapagos. Yeah, for sure. Turning into that stellar form just to make it even stronger than usual. But once again, it was this uh, 3v1 being set up by Brantley, sacrificing his Calyrex just to put himself in a good situation here. You don't want to switch it out because then your Torkoal risks taking a little bit too much damage. But even then, um, you're pretty comfortable to take. It's a pretty tanky Pokemon. But uh, yeah, losing the Calyrex, but it doesn't really matter. You're still able to get your win condition set up and get ready to go. But wow, honestly, that is really good damage, all things considered, that ability of being able to absorb. Wow. But Terra, uh, Terra Star Storm is going to come out. It's probably going to KO the Ndidi, but Torkoal should be pretty comfortable taking this hit. It's relatively tanky, but that is a choice spec Stellar Star Storm, but it still manages to live through it. But that eruption now isn't going to be doing as much damage as it used to be. So this is going to be a very close end to this game. And now the Psychic Terrain down. This Hatterene not going to be doing as much as it could have, but still going to be a major threat here on the field. Yeah, so this first one's most likely going to go the way of Brantley. But um, at the very least, you get to see what Pokemon he was going to end up taking out in this first game. He did bring the Hatterene, so oh. maybe Jackson can use that information to take him into the next one. Spanning Force is going to wipe 
out this uh, Therapagos to finish off this first game. And yeah, like I said, it's just so much more consistent and easier to work with when you have just one button you gotta press, one button you gotta <laughs> press. Whereas with uh, with Jackson's side of the field, it's there's a couple of things you gotta worry about. You gotta make sure that you have your uh, you have your Chi Yu out, so then you're getting the maximum damage off of your Terra Star Storms, or you're making sure that you're getting your Urshifu in a good position where it's not gonna get KO'd instantly. There's so many things to worry about. Whereas here, all your Pokemon are comfortable to taking hits, and trust me, they're also very comfortable dealing them out. Exactly, and what an amazing uh, first game in the set. I can't believe it. it was so back and forth there, but you could tell Brantley was sitting back very comfortable. But Jackson also had some amazing strats as well. I'm excited to see how this will end up going in. I like the Chi Yu. I think Chi Yu was a star player on Jackson's team. Got had a lot of survivability and still has a lot of survivability against most of the matchups on Brantley's team. For sure. And that's actually something we didn't get to see too much of yesterday. It's kind of why it caught me off guard. Um, the spread move usage from the Chi Yu. Um, usually, I, I feel like most competitors do bring uh, the Heat Wave but we didn't really get to see it um, coming out for the uh, Chiyu, but as you're kind of just nudging <laughs> at me there, the wide guard on that Gallade could actually be the next considered uh, play for Brantley. Of course, you do lose out on the ability to use follow, follow me, but if you get the right read, it might not even matter. Yeah, there's a lot of coverage moves on the side of Jackson that would block the Chi Yu's overheat and the Star Storm from Tarapaga. So, very good choice. I have a feeling this Glade might be back there in the pocket, but now we're seeing the Hatterene lead. I see. So you don't even want to have to worry about the uh, the Heat Wave here. Both of these Pokemon, they're not weak to fire. They're going to be able to take it pretty comfortably. and. Honestly, again, they'll be able to dish out a lot of damage. You're going to get your Trick Room off as well. Or uh, is that... Is that uh, Indeedee? Oh, it does have Trick Room. I yes. think this Indeedee is going to be using the Trick Room, and then the Hatterene is just protecting, so that it's prob... Jackson, it would be very smart to hit the Hatterene, but of course, Urshifu, it does oh, have right. Unseen Fist, so it still very much could knock out... Oh, Ooh. that Dark Balls! I'm surprised it was able to withstand that one, but Iron Head is actually going to be the play, and of course, it's going to go through that Protect. Trick Room going to be the next usage here. I'm curious to know why there was no usage of the uh, the uh, Wicked Blow, but I think it might have been a call-out predicting the um, Terra-type, but it actually is a Terra Psychic, so this is a hard call-out, potentially even baiting out the Switch to hit with the Iron... Oh, but there's the usage there. It's going to be devastating to the Urshifu, and of course, that uh, Chiyu as well, taking so much damage and going to get cleaned up pretty comfortably. Oh, actually, oh. never mind. It's going to tank that the one. Fairy. One for one trade there. There it is, knocking out the Ndidi. It's a one for one trade right now, but all things considered, I feel like Brantley's in a much more comfortable position to deal with the overwhelming force uh, that Jackson is capable of bringing, just because his force is even more overwhelming and he gets to go first. <laughs> exactly, that Trick Room setup is absolutely so beneficial for Brantley right now, and especially throwing at the Flutter main. The fastest one in the field is now the slowest. So this Flutter main is not gonna get the use that it should be getting here. Unfortunately, it is very likely that it's going to have to take a huge Glacial Lance, and it's also going to get plus one if it knocks out Chiyu. Once again, as well, Hatterene is going to be using those coverage moves to do so much damage with that Psychic Terrain up as well. Using the protect. Oh, actually using Protect, my mistake. I misread that there. And that's going to just make sure that it's not going to be able to take any damage, which is most likely trying to get the pick off onto the Hatterene. But that's wow. going to be a double KO for Brantley to start this next turn and you're not going to be able to get any type of follow-up um yeah with that uh with that energy boost or booster energy on the flutter main there's not an opportunity to tank one hit moves with a move or with an item like a focus sash so unfortunately it is a very vulnerable pokemon and it's going to go down because of that fact once again we're looking at the last pokemon being Therapagos. Yeah, here we are, Tyrapagos being the last one standing once again. And now, 
With this Calyrex boosted by attack, things are looking very good for Brantley. He has done so many good reads here today. He is about to end the game with one more Glacial Lance. That should just about do it. Yeah, I feel even though uh, it's not low or anything, with the boost that is perceived, this Glacial Lance it might still knock it out. Especially now, since it's only one Pokemon on the field, it's not going to have the reduced power that comes from being its spread move. This is going to be able to single target this one Terrapagos and do overwhelming damage. And of course, if it doesn't succeed, then, you know, Hatterene's there to finish the job. So let's see what's going to come out here. Expanding Force, the first move to come out. And it's going to be able to tank that one. Going to lose some of his HP because of the Life Orb and Glacial Lance. The last move here of the game, knocking out Terrapagos. That's going to be Brantley taking 2-0 over Jackson. Yeah, brilliant plays by Brantley. He takes this set, winning the battle between Michigan and Windsor. Winning it all right now. And congrats to Jackson. He played very well of course. as well. But Brantley just had that little bit of a better team comp here in Regulation G. Yeah, again, I feel with the matchup that was kind of let out, you have two Pokemon that want to get their spread moves out and just deal as much damage as possible. But because of the nature of the team compositions, I feel like it's just a lot easier for the Calyrex to be able to succeed in that regard. Chi Yu representing a huge threat to that Calyrex. Unfortunately, Brantley made the read and was able to switch in some more favorable matchups for that first turn um, in the uh, Hatterene and the Indeedee. Your Chi Yu, unfortunately, just taking too much damage to really make any kind of follow-up plays after that first turn. Yeah, I think maybe I would have liked... Well, I think they both played very well, and I think maybe Terrapaga's leading would have been Actually, more... Right. Would have been a little bit riskier, you know, depending For on the sure. matchup, but because it's so tanky, it being in the back line, it just does not get the use that I think we could have seen out of it. You know, it could have been a really good starter, even if it was not... As dominant, you know, it's not as much set of moves, but just hammering away, maybe even stalling out some of those trick rooms would have let gave Jackson a little bit more time. Mm -hmm. One thing I'm immediately thinking about as well is potentially using the Amoongus, which is also a pretty slow Pokemon, so it fares pretty well in the trick room, and also being able to use some moves to start things off, like with that Spore or any kind of follow-up like that. Um... Of course, with the Indeedee, it's a little hard because it does have Follow Me, but if you put it to sleep, then the next turn afterwards, maybe you could try to get some spread damage done with, um, you know, your Chi Yu. But in any case, that's game one kind of set in stone and completed. Brantley is going to overcome with a 2-0 lead, but we're still getting ready for the next games coming up as well. We're going to have five rounds of Swiss today before we get into our top cut, so we still have a lot of action here, ladies and gentlemen. Before we send it off to a quick break, once again, Matthias, what are you excited to see coming forward? today oh i'm just excited to see maybe a little bit more experimental comps you know maybe mm -hmm. not calyrex or terrapagos or even or in Spectrior, you know let's just see something lugia. huh let's see lugia yeah let's see lugia let's see something weird out here <sighs> maybe even a groudon i'd be happy with and that's a very <laughs> solid pick as well but we haven't seen that one just yet so i'm excited for all the surprises we have here in store today with so many players so we're bound to see some interesting teams with all that being said we're about to throw it to a quick break we'll be right back with our next game 